Welcome! This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 27th of September 2011. I think the Sun might be returning to more normal conditions after the hectic few days we've had. But before we get to that, our trivia question. 14 years ago on this day, NASA lost contact with Mars Pathfinder. Mars Pathfinder consisted of a lander and a rover. After it had landed on Mars, they renamed both parts after two famous people. Can you name who those people were? The answer will be given at the end. In the last 24 hours we've had one M flare and a host of C flares. This seems to be relatively quiet compared with what we've had in the last week. But you should remember that uh, this would seem relatively active compared with most times in the last six months. I think the stunning thing about this in particular is the decay in the X-ray background. It's dropped by a factor of over six in just 48 hours. And that shows just how much the sun has calmed down. We have five officially numbered regions on the disk. Region 1303 disappeared over the southwest limb overnight, but the new region coming over the northeast limb has been numbered region 1306. So let's start as we did yesterday with region 1301, which is now in the northwest quadrant. Region 1301 is that diffuse region with a large number of small spots. That seems to have decayed somewhat, both in the number and the size of the spots. Region 1304, following it to the south and east, also seems to have decayed a little in the last 24 hours. Region 1302 in the northeast quadrant is still huge, although it seems to be decaying slightly. It has still produced six C flares and one M flare in the last day. I've prepared a uh, six day movie here uh, that shows the evolution of this uh, region since it came over the east limb. What I would like you to watch in this movie is the motion of the central spot. It seems to detach from the trailing region early on and move towards the leading spot. That journey now seems to be complete and that's probably why the region is calming down. It's this motion that creates the stress that causes flares. Regions 1305 and 1306 are near the east limb. They seem to be single large spots and are not showing very much activity and I don't expect them to in the near future unless major growth occurs in those regions. So in the last 24 hours solar activity is moderated. The other thing I hope you've noticed is that all regions now are in the northern hemisphere. The southern hemisphere has again gone quiet. We won't get into a full solar maximum until the southern hemisphere picks up. Let's take a look at the evolution of those regions using the sunspot and magnetic data from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. First we'll look at the white light movie showing the sunspots, then the magnetic movie. As you've already seen the evolution of these sunspots from region 1302 in detail, take a careful look at the magnetic movie and see if you can see the equivalent evolution in that. Using the data from the AIA instrument we can look at the transition region and corona. First I'll show a transition region movie of the whole disk, but then a short detailed movie of the evolution of region 1302 over the last 24 hours. Do you notice any difference in the level of activity between the first half of the movie and the second half of the movie? So in your opinion is the region calming down or heating up? Next the exact same thing but looking at the low temperature corona using the iron 9 line which is about 600,000 degrees. Now here again is the evolution of region 1302. Here I'd like you to compare what you just saw in the transition region with what you're seeing in the corona. Which of the two looks more dynamic and variable? The corona or the transition region? So which is the better indicator of flaring activity? In the high temperature coronal image from the SXI instrument on GOES, Look at the northwest limb and all the activity that's going on behind that limb, probably mostly from region 1295. Next we turn to the outer corona and use the data from the SOHO LASCO instrument. First we'll look at the C2 high resolution field of view that's in red and then the larger field of view C3 which is in blue. Do we have more coronal mass ejections today than we did yesterday or vice versa? From the ACE data we can see that the solar wind has been undergoing quite a bit of change in the last 24 hours. It started off the period with a very high density at over 40 protons per cubic centimeter. After that the velocity steadily rose to nearly 700 kilometers per second and the temperature has been slowly dropping from about a million degrees down to about 100,000 degrees. 
The density right now is almost zero, which is quite surprising. The high energy electron flux is beginning to recover, and the proton event is beginning to decay. The auroral zone seems to be quieting down quite a bit. However, there were some very nice pictures taken of the aurora uh, that resulted from this event, and you can see some of those on spaceweather.com. The KP index, while reaching a level of 8 yesterday, has now dropped back to a level of 4, which is rated as unsettled. NOAA has also dropped all its alerts for geomagnetic storm, radiation storms, and radio blackouts. So any threat to disruptions to our ground-based technologies seem to be over for the moment. So in summary then, the X-ray background has dropped to the B4 level, the sunspot numbers remain ju just above 100, the radio sun intensity has dropped significantly to 150 solar flux units, solar wind speed has dropped to 560 km per second with a very low density of less than one proton per cubic centimetre, and geospace conditions remain unsettled at the moment. I've had to downgrade my 24 hour forecast quite considerably from yesterday's. I now put C flares as being likely, M flares as being possible, X flares increasingly unlikely. The sunspot number will ease lower, CMEs remain likely, solar wind speed will go lower, and a geomagnetic storm is possible. In the longer term we take a look at the composite coronal image and we can see that there are some faint regions due over the northeast limb, and in two to three days time there should be a fairly bright region coming over the southeast limb. The answer to our trivia question is that the lander part of the Mars Pathfinder was named after Carl Sagan, the famous planetary astronomer, and the uh, rover was named after Sojourner Truth, who was a campaigner for the rights of slaves and also for women in the 19th century. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.